So now we're looking at the third FRQ. Again, if there's any um, mistakes and corrections, I'll put it in the description below or put it uh, as a pinned comment. Let f be a differentiable function with f of 4 equals to 3 on the interval from 0 to 7, the graph of f prime. The derivative of f consists of a semicircle and two line segments as shown in the figure. Find f of 0 and f of 5. So when you have one of these, I always like to set up, I'm going to say the integral from 0 to, say, 4 of um, f prime of t dt would equal f of 4 minus f of 0, because I know what 4 is. So I know this value is 3. I know this is the area from 0 to 4 is this negative area. So like this area here is what? It's negative areas because it's below the x-axis. It's also circle of radius 2. So it's 1 half pi times 2 squared, which is um, 2 pi. So there's no calculator on this one. So this one is negative 2 pi. So I can solve for f of 0. It's going to be 3 plus 2 pi if I just rearrange that. Let me just confirm I did that right. I move the f0 to that side. I add 2 pi, 3 plus 2 pi. OK. So then I want to do the same thing for f of 5. I'm going to integrate from 4 to 5, f prime of t dt. That would just equal f of 5 minus f of 4 by fundamental theorem of calculus. f of 4 I know is 3, and this is the area from 4 to 5. That looks like 1 to me. Is that a slope of, let's just confirm, 1, 2, 1, 2. Yeah, it's a slope of 1. So that would be a 1 there. So 1 by 1 is, the tri you know, base is 1, height is 1, half of that is 1 half. So this is going to be 1 half. And so f of 5 is equal to, move the 3 to the other side, 3 plus 1 half is 3 and a 0.5 or um, uh, 7 halves, right? Find the x coordinates of all points of inflection of the graph f on 0 to x. So points of inflection are where the second derivative of x changes signs, right? Because that's what the point, I always start with the definition. What is a point of inflection? Mm -hmm. f double prime of x changes signs. That's where the slopes of f prime changes sign. Right? So where do the slopes of f prime change sign is right here, only at x equals 6. And that happens at x equals 6. OK? That's it. Uh, let g be the function defined by g of x equals f of x minus x. On what intervals is g decreasing? So I want to know where g prime of x is less than 0. Right? And the way you do that is you make a number line. So g prime of x is equal to f prime of x minus 1. And I want to know when it's equal to 0. So when is f prime of x equal to 0? These would be the y values of f prime of x. So I look at the function and say, when is it equal to 0? It's 5 and at 7. So that happens at 5 and 7. So then I make a number line. Here's 5, here's 7. I actually don't want to go beyond 0. So then I say between 0 and 5, this quantity, f prime of x, is below 1. So when I do the subtraction, it's going to be negative. Between 5 and 7, it's above 1. So that's when I subtract 1, it would be positive. And be 7 to the right, it's going to be negative. So um, where is it decreasing? It's decreasing. So when is this less than 0? It's when um, it between 0 and 5. And um, well, actually, there's nothing beyond 7. So just between 0 and 5. Okay, nothing's beyond 7 because it actually stops there at 7. So just between uh, 0 and 5, that's where um, that would be negative. For the function defined in part C, find the absolute minimum value of this interval. So what we want to do is we want to compute G. G we, want to, we want to do a candidate's test for absolute value. So we always want to check the endpoints, 0 and 7. We want to check any critical points. And we already found where the critical points are. That happens at 5 or 7, only 5 really that matters. Oops. So I want to compute all of these. I want to compute g of 0. Uh, I want to compute g of 7 and g of 5. OK, so g of 0, based on this function, is f of 0 minus 0. And we found what f of 0 was. f of 0 was 3 plus 2 pi. So this is 3 plus 2 pi. g of 7 is f of 7 minus 7. So let's see what f of 7 is. Did we find f of 7? We did not find f of 7. So to find f of 7, I would integrate from 4 to 7, or t dt. That would equal f of 7 minus f of 4. 
Okay, so the integral from four to seven, that's this area here. So you could you could make it like, I don't know how you want to do, how you, however you like to find the area here. I'm gonna make it, I don't know, I'm gonna make it this triangle as a two by two triangle. So that area there is four, half of four is two. So that area is two. And what is this area? It's that trapezoid. Or you can make it into a triangle and a square, but it's one, two, so average is three halves, three halves times one, that area is three halves. So this is two plus three halves, that's four halves plus three halves, that's seven halves. This is three, so f of seven is equal to three plus seven halves, that's six halves, no, six halves plus three halves. Yeah, six halves, just wanna write it out. Six over two, that would be 13 over two. So this would be 13 over two minus seven, which is 14 over two, or negative one half. So this is negative one half. And then finally, g of five is f of five minus five. So f of five we found was seven halves. So seven halves minus five, or which is 10 halves, is negative three over two. Um, and they want you to not find where it's at, but find the absolute minimum value. That's here, that's the minimum value right there.